Okay, great. So I see Edwin. Edwin's talk has got a good competition. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Um, so today I want to tell you about what's coming in WordPress 5.0. And WordPress 5.0 is actually just around the corner. It is literally like two weeks away. So originally they had planned to release it uh, on Monday, on the 19th. But um, there were a bit of delays, so they pushed it back a little bit. And I'm sure it's going to be out by the end of the year. So this, I hope, is really relevant and really timely. Okay. Um, so as as Rene said, I'm one of the organizers for the WordCamp. I didn't expect <laughs> to be on stage today, um, but and and I and I put this talk together in one day. So hopefully, please bear with me if uh, uh, it's not perfect. Okay. No, this thing is broke already. Oh gosh. Okay, fine. Okay, so um, uh, I'm my my internet nickname is Blog Junkie. Uh, back then, you know, blogs were very big, but now blogs not not <laughs> not popular anymore. So and then Facebook Junkie is, is taken. So I'm the, I'm the Blog Junkie. Um, the com I run a company called Click WP, and we provide uh, WordPress tech support for bloggers and small business owners. Right. I, I've been a WordPress user for a long, long time. Um, I also helped organize the KL WordPress meetup that Rindy was talking about, and um, and and that's it. So uh, I've got a few slides like this. So if you want to share something from my talk, you know, I prompt you with a slide like this and a hashtag. This means that you know you can snap a picture and uh, put it on Twitter, Instagram with the hashtag, right? And uh, here's an example of the slide. WordPress 5.0 will introduce a big change to the post editor. Okay, so um, that's the the post editor that I'm talking about is you know where you go to write new posts, you know, add a new page or add a new product, and that's the post editor that we've been using for the past ten years. So um, WordPress 5.0 when you upgrade and then you're going to add a new post, you will see something completely different. All right? And uh, I'm telling you so that you won't get a big shock and uh, get upset with the big change. All right, that, this post editor, the new post editor, is called um, Gutenberg. Okay, so it's nicknamed Gutenberg. We've heard uh, Tashka speak about Gutenberg today. And um, basically, Gutenberg is just a code name. Uh, when within WordPress, they won't refer to it as Gutenberg, but uh, you hear a lot of people talking about the Gutenberg editor, but the official name will actually be the new post editor, or maybe even block editor. All right. So here's the post editor that we all know, that we love, or we love to hate. And uh, when you upgrade to WordPress 5.0, it will change to this. Okay, so it looks uh, different, and it also works pretty differently. And I'm gonna attempt a live demo for you guys later. Okay, but before that, I just wanna step back first and talk a bit about, um, you know, what's the problem with the editor? Why, why do we need to upgrade this editor? Okay, so in a typical blog post or a web page today, you know, we wanna uh, text. Plain text is not enough. Uh, text and images is not enough. And we, we, we increasingly want to put rich media into our blog posts and pages. So we've got audio and video. That's pretty easy to solve quite easily. We can embed content from YouTube, uh, embed content from SoundCloud, and actually now you can even embed content from Twitter or uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, but then things get more complicated. Maybe you want to add tables, you know, tables with multiple columns. You want to add a button. Do you know how difficult it is to add a button in WordPress? You know, you've got to install a plugin first before you can you can add a button to, to the WordPress post editor. Sometimes you're gonna have quotes, code snippets, you know, for those who wanna share code, like you know, if you're a, a bit more technical like Lorna, you're gonna share code snippets. Um, and then 
testimonials. Uh, if you have a business website and you want to tell, you have a page of uh, happy clients, so you're going to have some testimonials. Uh, if a business websites typically also have our team members about us, and then you know about David, about Rindy, about Sam, and so on. Uh, you may also want to have outlets, locations where you can find us, and you want to embed a map into your post or your page, right? And then all sorts of other things, bells and whistles like accordions, tabs, show and hide, and stuff like that. Okay, and and you know the thing is, um, as we want to add more and more rich media, it gets more and more complicated. And then new people who come to WordPress feel that you know why is it so complicated? And to prove my point. Do you know that adding testimonials to WordPress is the most complicated thing ever? Okay, because you would think that adding a testimonial is simple. You just some text, an image, the name of the person, and style it a bit, and, and it will look okay. But in reality, there are so many steps. Okay. First of all, you've got to go find a good plugin. Alright? So then you have to spend time Googling which is the best plugin reviews of the plugin, you find all the spam in Google results, you know, who's, uh, uh, which one is better. And then I like this plugin called Strong Testimonials. I mean, after many, many uh, hours of researching plugins, I decided that Strong Testimonials is the best plugin. But even then, you know, it's still a lot of steps. You gotta install the, the testimonial. And then when, uh, let's say I'm on the services page, and I wanna put the testimonial on the services page. I still can't do it. I gotta go and create new testimonial first. Create new testimonial, and then add the testimonial to a group, and then make a short code for the group. And then after that, I go back to the original services page, put the short code in there, and then I have to preview, and then I change the settings, preview, and then change the settings before I can get the testimonial looking the way that I want. So for new WordPress users, there's a lot of concepts here. They have to, first of all, understand what is a plugin. I have to install a plugin. How do I install a plugin? Oh, after I install, I still need to click activate. You know, why? why I mean, I already installed. Why do I need to activate it some more? Uh, then after that, you have to learn, the, the user has to learn that I want to I add a testimonial to this page, but actually I have to create a testimonial on another page first. And then I have to know what is a short code. So a lot, a lot of steps. I tell you, creating testimonials in WordPress is at crisis level. <laughs> okay, so here's where I do the demo. And I want to show you how easy it is, or how relatively easy it is, to create a, a testimonial with Gutenberg. Okay, hang on, I gotta... Okay, so what I'm doing here now, I'm creating a page called Our Happy Clients. And um, so here, here is the, basically, this is the, the Gutenberg editor. Um, it's in Gutenberg, uh, we use the concept of blocks. So every piece of content on the page is a block. So uh, if I'm typing this here, this paragraph, it's actually a block, okay? Uh, and you can you can move blocks up and down by clicking the buttons like this, or you can drag and drop them. That, okay? Blocks have a, have a settings, okay? So up here you can change the alignment, all right? And at the side here you have even more settings. You can change the, the text size. You can add a drop cap. Okay, and you have color settings. And you can change the background color. And you can change the text color. Okay, so um, this is not this this is just an overview of how the blocks system works in Gutenberg. All right. So just now I said creating testimonials is a lot easier. So let's see how that works. First. 
you can click the add a block button and then now I'm going to search for testimonials alright so um, and then I can put a name and I can also upload an image so I don't have a I don't have a I didn't I didn't plan <laughs> that image so I'll just choose a random one here okay luckily this can work and and that's it so now we have got a, a, a testimonial and it's right there on the page I didn't have to go and add new testimonials first and I didn't have to figure out short codes and stuff like that it's right here on the page and because this is a Gutenberg block it has uh, built-in settings I can even change the, the font size I can change the alignment and I can change the background color okay here's our WordCamp green All right. so uh, there are a bit of it's a bit rough around the edges the alignment here is not perfect but I think you can see how creating something like testimonials is a lot simpler compared to uh, the previous paradigm using short codes and stuff like that okay I can even duplicate the short code and that makes uh, the job a lot easier as well. Okay. And the great thing about Gutenberg is that you can add additional blocks. Okay, so uh, I show you, I mean, we just had a short, quick look at Gutenberg and we had a look at uh, the text block and then we saw a uh, testimonials block but you can add all sorts of blocks by installing plugins okay so you install a plugin they will enable additional blocks so for example you can add a uh, accordion block uh, tabs block uh, you can in insert a block for uh, github gist code uh, to, sh to show that on your web page and uh, right now the way that it works is that you can install a plugin and it, and it will enable um, multiple blocks, more, more than one block. So, so you can have like a uh, install the atomic blocks plugin that will add like 10 new blocks to, to Gutenberg. Now the blocks can be pretty powerful as well. Okay, because, um, so here's an example of something that the Gutenberg plugin can do. Uh, Google has got this rich snippets Okay, so sometimes when you do a search on Google, then you will see uh, a, a, a result like this. You know, instead of the regular search results, it shows you the, the, the image and then the information right there in the search results. So this is, a, a, this is called a rich snippet. Now, to do a rich snippet requires quite a bit of uh, custom HTML code. You've got, specifically, I think you have the right uh, JSON LD. That's the format that Google expects. Now, you know, regular people, and even myself, to be honest, I have no idea what JSON LD is. Okay, and but thankfully, you know, if you use the Yoast SEO plugin, the Yoast SEO plugin installs this um, how-to block, and the how-to block, basically, you add the block, and then you can create steps, and then you can uh, add the time needed for the block. You can add an image to each step, and it will it will output the information to the to, to, to the web page as a how as a how to with steps like this, but it will also create that JSON LD code that Google needs to display a rich snippet like that. So basically, Gutenberg helps you with your SEO as well, um, or can help you with your SEO as well. So to summarize, every piece of content in the new editor is a block, right? And you can add more blocks via plugins. Blocks will become the language of WordPress and could even replace widgets. Okay, so one thing, I, I, I work with a lot of small businesses and bloggers, and one thing uh, that, that a lot of them struggle to understand is that, okay, if you want to edit this part of the page, you have to use, go to add posts, edit pages, and so on. If you want to edit this part of the page, you have to use widgets, go to appearance widgets. 
And at the bottom of the page is also appearance widgets. So, so it's like they have to understand they have to understand a lot of these other extra concepts. So, but with uh, but with Gutenberg, the blocks become the language of WordPress, and instead of adding a widget to the sidebar, you can actually add a block to the sidebar. And and I'm saying this this is the future. This is what they plan. This is from the Gutenberg Handbook. Uh, it, uh, they already planned this, and in fact, Matt Mullenweg has already also uh, uh, shared some ideas about that. Okay, so the, the Gutenberg Handbook says it is very possible for Gutenberg to grow beyond the confines of post and page content to include the whole page, including everything that surrounds the content. And Matt Mullenweg has said with his own, you know, out of his own mouth that uh, uh, when WordPress uses the block concept for widgets, uses the block concept for menus, and then everything becomes a lot simpler for new users to understand. All they need to know, they just need to understand how blocks work. Blocks you add it to the page, and then there are settings on the side. And then after that, you can uh, uh, change the content for the main content, as well as the sidebar content, the header content. So here's a bit of a brag, but WordPress 5.0 will have the most advanced content editor on the web. <laughs> okay, and uh, just for some fun, uh, here is Blogger. All right, so Blogger has got a very. Uh, it looks similar to the to the existing post editor in WordPress, but you know, in Blogger Blogger's sites, it's very easy to get the formatting wrong. Like for example, like like this extra small text here, and like uh, the tweet here doesn't appear as a tweet here. And, and blogger is just a headache. Uh, this is medium. Uh, medium. Medium editor is a very nice experience for writing, but it's quite limited just to writing. Okay, you cannot add a lot more blocks. They have. Uh, they have. Um, you can add videos. You can add images. You can add embeds, but that's about it. You know, you can't add a testimonial. You can't add a how-to step by step, like I mentioned. You can't add uh, accordion show and height. You can't add tabs with, with medium. I didn't check out Wix. So does anybody know if Wix and, and Gutenberg? How does it look? No, no Wix fans here, right? Good. Okay. And I mean, Gutenberg is so potentially powerful that other CMS <laughs> is also looking to integrate with Gutenberg. All right. So Drupal is one of the competitors to WordPress. And you know what? They are trying to use Gutenberg inside of Drupal. So what began as a WordPress project, another competitor is like, hey, that's a good idea, let's try and use it too. So I don't think it's, it's, it's really bragging to say that WordPress has the most content, uh, most powerful content editor ever. But you know, okay, really, maybe I'm getting a little too excited, right? And. Um, uh, it's true, it's true, because uh, before we are in the world of blocks and everything is so easy and then we are so empowered, there's going to be quite a few uh, challenges to overcome. All right? So coming to WordPress 5.0, in about two weeks, you get a new block editor, you have to learn the new, oh, you have to learn to do things differently, you have incompatibility with themes and plugins, you have missing features and possible bugs, and you have frustration. So this is coming to you in the next two weeks. Thank you very much, that's my presentation. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, okay. It's not all that bad, all right, all right. So there's, there's quite some promise to, to, to Gutenberg. So here's some example of those uh, uh, problems here. So this one here is a Team Forest team, and uh, Gutenberg is broken. This one here to select the sidebar is at the top. And there's a big empty space here. And then you have stuff like this. Updating failed, Cloudflare is blocking the REST API request. That was new, I've never seen that before, but I encountered that uh, last week. And so like I said, the transition you know, is not going to be smooth sailing, uh, or just the transition may not be smooth sailing. It can be smooth sailing, right? If you pay attention for the next five minutes, it can be smooth sailing. So, the, so this, um, 
There's two main points that I wanted to tell you in this talk. The first main point is that a big change is coming. And the second point is how to prepare. Okay? So I think it's relative I think it's quite easy how to prepare for, for, for Gutenberg. Um, the first thing to do is to try Gutenberg now so that you know how it will affect the website. Okay? And the way that you can try Gutenberg now is you go and install a plugin. You go to add plugins, you type in Gutenberg, and then you click install. And then after that, don't forget you have to click activate as well. Alright? So that will now install Gutenberg on your website, even and then you have Gutenberg on your website, even though it's not yet WordPress 5.0. Okay? So this gives you an idea. Uh, this should work exactly the same as uh, WordPress 5.0. So you can activate this plugin and then you can go and create a new post, create a, a, a new page, try and add a testimonial, try and do your translations and see how that, uh, how Gutenberg affects all of that. I would say that 90% Gutenberg will work without problem. Okay? So 90% Gutenberg will work without problem. But there's still that 10%, right? So what do we do? Um, okay, so first thing to do would be to upgrade your themes and plugins. All right? So Gutenberg has been in development since January 2017. At WordCamp 2017, at WordCamp 2017, yeah, last year, we were already, already talking about Gutenberg. So Gutenberg is like almost two years old. They've been developing it. And, and if the regular user doesn't know what Gutenberg is, developers uh, and, and team builders, plugin builders definitely know what Gutenberg is. So they would have time to prepare. And if you upgrade your teams and plugins, that, that might fix the issue. All right? So this is the DB team. And uh, the DB team is a very popular team. Anybody here use DB? DB, right? Okay. Now, DB has got its own page builder, right? So how is it going to compete with Gutenberg? So DB has now figured out a solution. They're not going to compete. They, they allow you to choose. So you can create a page, create a post, and then you can choose to use the default editor. And the default editor, which they mean is the new WordPress block editor or also known as Gutenberg. Okay, so step two uh, is to update your themes and plugins. Those of you who use pirated themes and plugins, maybe consider investing by the original one so you get upgrade. Okay, then also you have no viruses, that's good. And step three, now if everything doesn't work for you, okay, if, if, if you install it and the site is like completely unusable, all right, so here's an example. Uh, this is the client site, and this is using uh, Nfold. Anybody here use Nfold theme? Nfold theme, nice, okay. So, and you know Nfold has got this Avia layout builder, right? So if you install Gutenberg, here's what happens. And then, <laughs> and then you'll be like, ah, what's going on? Okay, so if this happens to you, all right, and then you, and then uh, uh, you have, you are not able to go and change all the pages, you know. So uh, the solution for that is you install this thing called the Classic Editor plugin. Now, the, the people who develop WordPress, they know that not everybody is going to be ready for Gutenberg. So they have uh, released this Classic Editor plugin, and this will this will just this will make the editor go back to the old old editor, Classic Editor. All right. So this means this will continue to work. Uh, Visual Composer will continue to work. Anything that you used before will continue to work just like it was in WordPress 4.9.8. Okay? There's also <laughs> other um, uh, plugins like Disable Gutenberg, but I mean, I think you should do the official one. This is the official one Classic Editor by WordPress uh, Contributors. Okay? So, this is a final takeaway I want to share with you guys that the uh, Gutenberg editor is the future of WordPress. You know, in, in uh, a few years' time, everything that we do is going to be a block. You know, I mean, uh, uh, we talk a lot about widgets uh, and, and short codes, you know, but in the future, all of that is going to be uh, take the back seat. And, 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 and we are going to then move on to Blocks. Everything is going to be a block. All right. The speaker after me, Prasad, 
he's going to talk about how to develop for uh, Gutenberg. So I'm very excited to uh, learn about that. Uh, Prasad is right there, Rini. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. The Gutenberg editor is the future of WordPress. So if you're building a site now, if your site now doesn't work with, with Gutenberg, I suggest that you know you plan to upgrade it sometime in the future. All right. It doesn't have to be today, tomorrow. All right. But I mean, if you want to buy a, if you want to buy um, a phone, you know you wouldn't buy a phone uh, with with less features. You know, like like let's say for example. Um, um, my old phone was the iPhone 6s, and I, I, I now upgraded to the iPhone 10s. And I mean, like you know, I'm I'm not gonna go from a 6s to a, a Samsung S6. I, I would get a S9, right, or or, or a 10s. So w when you are building your site right now, and you want to upgrade your site, I also suggest that you look to the future and plan to have a Gutenberg-friendly site. Because like I said, Gutenberg is the future of WordPress. In the future, everything is going to be all about blocks. And if you don't get with the program, then you're going to be left behind. All right. Now, uh, WordPress 1.0 to today sort of feels like a mobile phones of, uh, of the 2000s. All right. Who had a Nokia 3310? Right? It lasted forever. <laughs> One battery charge lasts like three days, right? And um, I mean, I I don't want you to think that WordPress 5.0 is going to be the future. You know, I mean, Samsung recently announced foldable screens and stuff like that. Uh, yes, WordPress 5.0 is it is going to be the foundation for the future. But I think WordPress 5.0 is not future yet. It's more like this. WordPress 5.0 is sort of a um, in between stage before. Future WordPress, and and we're gonna have all of these amazing new features. You know the in between stage for phones, like you know like the trio. I want to be a touch screen, but I still want to have a keypad, right? And like uh, all of them are like that. You know, I want a big screen, and I still want a keypad. You know, so so WordPress 5.0, I think is is gonna be a bit like that. You know, the experience, and um, uh, there will be a bit of rough edges. There will be a bit of frustration. But I mean, the, the future looks good. The future looks bright for WordPress. Okay? And that's it. That's it for my talk. Thank you very much. And uh, if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.